the thing is that a lot of people don't realize, but the sound that you hear ultimately in your room is not just a matter of the, the speakers, but it's also of the room and the way the speakers interact with the acoustics of the room. If you take just any conventional accurate loudspeaker and put it in a normal room or in a studio, you're not guaranteed to get great sound. That's because although the speaker itself might be very accurate, the way it interacts with the acoustics of the room may lead to all sorts of problems, acoustic problems, and the sound may not be very good. In this video, we will dive into the Dutch and Dutch 8C calibration and adaptive philosophy featuring their designer, Martin Mensik. Hi everybody, I'm Victor Malvolti, a mastering engineer and audio salesman spreading the word about the Dutch and Dutch 8C here in France. Now, if you want to know more about the 8C, please take a look at the dedicated video I made about them. It's in French, but the captions work just fine. So, as you know, the Dutch and Dutch 8C are adaptative. This means that their design relies on many tricks and technologies that enable them to take into account their acoustic environment to produce optimum results. Some might say they are performing miracles in non-treated rooms as well as top-notch studios. To help you understand better the 8C calibration and philosophy, I caught Martin Mensik, CEO of Dutch and & Dutch and head designer. He visited a few studios to fine-tune some existing 8C installations in Paris and I caught up with him and asked him a few questions. This video will be in two parts. First, Martin will explain his measurement technique to correct room modes. And in the second part, I am interviewing him, so he explains to me the principles behind the adaptative philosophy. Before I let you hear from Martin, a big thanks to Sound Partisan, the French Dutch and Dutch distributor who invited Martin and helps me every day to promote the brand. Stay tuned after Martin's intervention because I will summarize his calibration process. Um, so there's many different mic positions that, that you could pick. Uh, I have a fixed procedure that I use and I use 11 microphone positions. I'm going to draw it. I'm going to start with my drawing with a top view of the head with a big nose and two ears. So in a studio like here, I do the first nine measurements in a square. The distance between the two mic positions is approximately 30 centimeters. So uh, I put the mic here first, then I move 30 centimeters to the right, 30 to the right again, then to the left of the head, position four. Then I put the mic exactly in the middle of where the head would be, this here, position five. Six is about 30 centimeters to the right of the right ear. And then I repeat the process, seven, eight, nine, behind the listener. That's the first nine positions that I use. Then I put the mic just above the head position and a final one just below the head position. That's 11 measurements in total. So I first measure um, the left speaker. Then we design a correction filter for the left speaker. And we have RoomEQ Wizard calculate the right filters. Then we send those filters to the left HC. Then we re repeat the whole procedure for the right speaker. We again take 11 measurements, the nine around the head, then the 10th one above, and the 11th just below the head. We use the exact same target. We have REW calculate the correct filters, and then we send those filters to the right speaker. And then finally, I do one measurement usually in the main listening position, which would be measure position five. I put the mic here in the stand and we measure left and right together. And sometimes you'll see some interactions between the left and right speaker. And you might have some residual minor peaks here and there and we'll correct those. So that's what we're gonna do. Actually, what I wanna do is start with microphone position one. So this here, I'm just gonna hold it in my hand. It's by the way, not too critical to have it exactly 30 centimeters to the left and 30 centimeters to the front. Okay. These are approximate positions. The main thing is what we have to do is do a number of measurements close to and ar just around okay. the, the main listening position and we want to average those measurements. All right? So it doesn't, we don't have to bring out a tape measure and get the exact position right. That's not what this is about. It's about getting a number of measurements and averaging them. Okay. So let me summarize what Martin did. 
As you may know, Dutch and Dutch has many features that make them adaptive. One of them is the correction EQ curve that we can apply. That's this special trick that Martin showed us. Thanks to Rumi Curizard partnership with Dutch and Dutch, the procedure is easy and streamlined. What Martin did is he took a bunch of measurements from both the right and the left speakers. He then applied the EQ that Rumi Curizard created based on those measurements. And the final step was just one measurement to create a combined left-right EQ to correct the minor interactions that were left. Next, let's listen to Martin explain why adaptation is crucial for achieving great sound. So Martin, you just calibrated the Perceval 8C speakers, right? That's right. Can you uh, describe what is the general uh, process of calibrating the 8C? What is the philosophy of mm. the 8C calibration? Yeah, of course. So the, the thing is that a lot of people don't realize, but the sound that you hear ultimately in your room is not just a matter of the, the speakers, but it's also of the room and the way the speakers interact with the acoustics of the room. And if you take just any conventional accurate loudspeaker and put it in a normal room or in a studio, you're not guaranteed to get great sound. That's because although the speaker itself might be very accurate, the way it interacts with the acoustics of the room may lead to all sorts of problems, acoustic problems, and the sound may not be very good. And this, this is where Dutch and Dutch come in. It's our philosophy that because what you hear is ultimately the loudspeaker and its interaction with the room, you have to start with that in mind. So you cannot just make an accurate loudspeaker and put it in any room. What you have to do instead is to take a loudspeaker, develop a loudspeaker that is accurate, but also one that at the same time interacts favorably with the room acoustics. And that's what we do. So the Dutch and Dutch HCs are uh, a cardioid loudspeaker. They have boundary coupling woofers in the back and the waveguide. We'll not get, go into that right now, but it is a speaker that has been designed to interact with the acoustics in a favorable manner. Um, however, if you put the HCs in the room, you do have to make some adjustments. We do that in the DSP. So we have to set up the boundary distances. We have to tell the HC how far away it is from the wall behind it and from the side walls. And we have to tell the DSP how far the speakers are from each other and what the distance is from the loudspeakers to the listener. And then we do some acoustic measurements in the room. So what we did in Parseval's room is we took 11 measurements for the left speaker, 11 measurements for the right speaker. And based on those measurements, we designed an equalization filter, which primarily targets the bass. So we did measurements. And then based on those measurements, we, um, we designed a target And RumiQ Wizard, that's the measurement software that we're using, it can calculate the correction filters. So we did the measurements, have RumiQ Wizard design the, the filters, and then we send those filters straight from the laptop computer into the HCs. Okay. So we did that for the left speaker, and we did that for the right speaker. So what we do is we start with an accurate loudspeaker. That's the first step of room matching. It's a loudspeaker that is designed to interact in a favorable manner with the room acoustics. We put these speakers in the room, then comes the second step in the room matching procedure. And that is matching the room, the speaker, matching the speaker to the room. And we do that with these uh, settings in the DSP, the measurements and the adjustments based on those measurements. The final step in the room matching procedure is for the listener to sit down and listen to tracks that they know very well and give it some time and over time make some small adjustments to the balance. Because although a measurement, a microphone uh, and, and the measurement software, they're very accurate in measuring the response at the listening position, ultimately what you hear is not perfectly described by a graph on a screen. Because two ears and the brain in between, they're in some sense more clever than a microphone could ever be. And in the end, it's not about the, the, the lines that you see on the screen. Ultimately, it is about what you as a listener hear when you're listening to the speakers. So that's why the listener ultimately gets to make the, um, some final adjustments. And this stage in the, the room matching procedure, procedure, we call the voicing. So we start with an accurate speaker. We make sure that it interacts favorably in, with the room. We put it in the room. And based on measurements, we adjust it to the room. And the final step is voicing. Okay, great.
Right. So that is the Dutch and Dutch meet method. That's the method. Of. That's right. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. Et voilà, that was Martin, the designer of the AT, who was kind enough to come to Paris and help my colleague and me become better at calibrating the AT. If you are in France and want a demo, feel free to hit me up. And if you are anywhere else in the world, visit the Dutch and Dutch AT website. Thank you and see you soon.